everyone, and welcome to One Mic Night, the podcast that brings you stories of artists, and people in the entertainment industry and life, helping to guide, answer questions, and motivate you in the business. Today is a special One Mic Night. This is One Mic Night Talk, where we talk about things in the community, aim to help and inspire the people. Today's guest is known as Rock Solid. He's a former NFL player. He is an options trader, and he's also the owner of King Essentials. Excuse me. You're good. We're going to talk a little bit today about stocks, investing, and how we can help each other prosper in life. So please welcome Rock Solid to One Mic Night. How you doing, man? Hey, man. How you doing? It's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time out. I know you got a busy schedule. But listen, man, I have questions. <laughs> so I want to get right into it. What are investments? Kind of oh, investments. What are investments? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's a good question because a lot of people don't really understand the concept of what an investment is. And um, we speak about investments is all you're doing is allocating money to to an asset or something that's going to generate you money later. That's the simplest way that to explain it. Okay. Me putting my money somewhere else that's gonna allow me to generate money in the future. Okay. So an asset being something that holds value. Holds value. Okay. Holds ownership. Um, create creates more value. Can can be more can become more valuable over time. Um, and you can create ownership. Okay. What are some of the, what are some of the assets? What are considered assets? Assets is the opposite of a liability. Something that can, that can grow you money. Okay. So something like, like stocks, it's considered an asset. Why? Because it can grow you money long term. A car, a car, for instance, is a liability. You know, once you buy it, it loses value when you drive it off the lot. So that's considered a liability. Okay. Um, assets are stocks. Assets are, are properties, you know, real estate. Assets are businesses. Things like that are that are gonna you know generate money. Okay, so something that has a possibility of gaining uh, um, monetary value or some sort of value in the future, as opposed to like you said, the liability, which is losing something. Because I know just from personal experience, when you buy a car, it depreciates in value once you drive it off the lot. It's no longer worth thirty thousand dollars. Exactly. But that's the liability part of it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We accumulate value over time. Those are assets. Those are the type of assets you wanna you wanna be involved in or you want to invest in. Okay. How do we know what you know a good a good uh, asset is? You know, maybe in terms of stocks. Or what what actually what is a stock first? So a stock is basically. A, I want to explain it in a in a way that makes sense to people. That's how I like to come off. I don't like to sit you in a in an office with a suit and tie and talk to a family and they, you know what I'm saying, all these terms, it doesn't make sense and they're just giving their money. But if I wanted to make it make sense, it's it's a value, it's a it's a, a small value of of a company. It's a piece of value of a company. So that's what the stock is. And then the share is what you purchase to invest in the stock mm. of that company, of Apple, of uh Microsoft, of uh, whatever it is, Amazon, any it, whatever company there is. So that's a stock. You invest in the stock by purchasing a share. Okay. okay. So the, the share is actually a specific part of the stock. It's yes, that, that of, per, of, per, of purchasing the stock. That's okay. how you because that's how you essentially become uh, owner of the asset by purchasing a share of Apple stock or Amazon stock. How do you know what are good uh, companies or, or things to invest in? That's that's a great question. That's, that's, that's probably the number one question that everyone asks is, mm -hmm. how do you know what's a good company to, to, to invest in? And the truth of the matter is, um, the easiest thing that I say, I say, if you if you use five things every single day, what are the five things that you use every single day, nine times out of 10, those, are the best stocks to invest in. All right, everyone has an iPhone. So Apple is probably a great stock to invest in. Everyone drives a vehicle, everyone brushes their teeth, everyone uses lotion, everyone uses deodorant, everyone buys food, all right? 
So what I tell people, go on, go online, and we'll, you know we'll go into that more in detail. You know, check out the stock that makes the product that you're buying or using every day. Starbucks and fast food is another one, and you find out their ticker symbol, and you can go invest in that because you know they're making money. They have lines every single day. Okay. Okay. So, by ticker symbol, what do you what do you mean by ticker symbol? So ticker symbol is the name of that each that each stock company. Uh, goes by it's usually like a three a two three actually it's really one one two three four or five uh symbol letter symbol that you can uh um that's how you recognize the stock so apples is a a p l it's like a synonym basically uh at t is just t um microsoft is msft that's just how you recognize the stock that's like their name instead of putting their whole 15 letter you know gotcha. Letter name, you find it by the ticker symbol. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, how have you know we're talking about stocks, but during this time, the COVID pandemic time, how has the stock market done? You know, and what actually what is the stock market? So the stock market is is pretty much a um, let's see. It's an ex an, ex an exchange, pretty much. It's really an exchange of a lot. Of, a lot of people who, a lot of investors, they call it a, an exchange of egos because people are buying and selling. People, are, it's usually yourself versus someone else. It's an ex but it's an exchange of the top companies in the world, or any really, really any company in the world. But ma mainly, the top ones are in the stock market. These ones that are worth five, ten, twenty, three hundred, four hundred million, you know, ten billion, all that. The bigger ones. Okay, that's the stock market did and on the stock market you can buy shares um you can buy stock um you also can trade shares trade stocks but this is how you really justify and fundamentally analyze the stocks uh, or the value of companies and how the companies are doing that's what you go to the stock market for if you want to know how walmart is doing how is their business doing how is their overall, you know, makeup of Walmart. How are they doing over a certain amount of time, or a certain period of time? Okay, so that yeah. means like, does that mean if the 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 company is doing well, then people want that company more, and it rises in value, or or what does that mean? Exactly. So if you wanted to if you wanted to invest in a stock, you'd go to the chart. So there's two type of there's two type of uh, analysts. So you have technical and then you have fundamental okay so if you have if you want to look at technical uh analysis you're going to go look at a chart now you've seen the chart with all the little lines i'm gonna uh, go ahead and and uh see if i can share one really quick but you look at the technical analysis you're looking at the chart and you want that chart to be going up at an angle you want it to be going up right over a long term if you look at it you can actually look at the different time charts of the of the stock you can look at it in the last month, the last two years, the last three years. You want it to be going up. If you see it going up, that's probably telling you, I want to invest in that company. Now, if you look at a daily chart, it's going to look like this, you know? Okay. But over a two year period, it's looking like that, or a five year period. So that's technical analysis. Uh, fundamental analysis, now you're going to go look at the company, their, uh, their stocks, their, I mean, their uh, financials, their profits. You're going to look into like the, the nitty gritty of the actual company, not the chart. And where do you find those? You you can find those. Do you have access? Do we, as you know, regular people, have access to those, or do you have to find somebody like a broker or somebody who has access to those to that information? One hundred percent. We we have access to them. There's websites. Um, I had just made a post earlier about a, a website that I use to find stocks. It's called StockCharts.com, and then there's also uh, TradingView.com. Now here we can access any stock in the world and we can look at their chart mm. and see how they're doing. Okay. And then by law, um, every company has to release their their financials. There's a website that you can uh, go to for that as well. And you can look at the financials, how they're doing, how much, how, what were their profits this year? Um, did they go into debt? Did they borrow a loan? Did they borrow, like you can, they, they have by law have to put that out. And we have access. We have 100% access to it. As regular people, we don't need a broker for that. Okay. So, what's the difference between you know? Um, I hear a lot of times private companies and public companies. You know. Yeah. So, 
when you have a private company, usually they could they could a private company can be a huge company, mm -hmm. but it's just that most people like me and you won't have access to invest in that company. They want they want big investors usually. At least some of the, the more popular or well-known ones. You have some that are private that we can invest in, but usually you have to be, uh, I forget the term, what they call it, but you have to be like kind of invited to invest in a private company. Now, whereas public companies, you could just boom, go to the stock market. Anybody could go to the stock stock market going to, you know, we got Robinhood, we got Webull, we got, there's so many apps, there's so many brokerages where we can just go to the stock market and trade public and buy public companies. Right, that's actually was gonna be my next question. What do you think about those companies? Because I know Robinhood's gotten a lot of play in the last couple of years, and I know a lot of the the younger people are doing, you know, doing that. It's almost like a video game for them. You know, I see a lot of <laughs> the kids just, oh yeah, yeah, my, my stocks are doing well, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. How, what, what are those, are those legit? Yeah, man, that's the, that's, that's the easiest way to, especially on the go too, you're moving around, you, you know, everyone just grabs their phone in the morning, that's the first thing we grab. Hey, yeah. Um, it's easy, man, you pick up Robin Hood, it's, it ha it's, it's very user friendly. Um, you got a lot of people who like Robin Hood and a lot of people who don't, but that goes for any, that goes for any brokerage. Um, there's a bunch of different ones, but I think it's definitely more efficient and convenient right on the phone. You don't gotta get up, log on your laptop, pull up the screens, like you got it on your phone. You know what I'm saying? Right. I wonder, do those, I don't know, because I don't know the apps, but um, do they allow for you to do big investments? I mean, is it is there a limit or a cap to the investment you can do on Robinhood? Uh, there's not, unless you're getting up to the, you know, the top, you know, millions and millions of dollars, yeah. Yeah. which I'm not 100% 100 familiar with, you can. You know, I personally know people who have, you know, six figures in Robinhood that have, you know, seven figures in Robinhood. And you know they're still trading daily. You know they're they're regular brokerages. They're just they call them like an e brokerage. So they don't have like uh, an actual building you can walk into or something like that. Like like Charles Schwab and like a right. Fidelity, right. Vanguard. You know those are the bigger, more well known brokerages. These are e brokerages where it's all electronic for the most part. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, you can have you can have money. Yeah, you can. Have, a lot of people got a lot of thousands, hundreds of thousands in there. I had no idea. Yeah, that's 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 big. How's the market been doing since the pandemic? Do you think has it? I know I hear it every day. Sometimes it plunges, sometimes it's going up. Yeah. But overall, how's it done? Is that the that's the fundamental part of it? Is that what it's called? Yeah. If you want to say fundamental, <laughs> how the business is precise. Yeah. I see. You, I see. You. Right. I'm trying to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So a lot. The thing right. is, a lot. Of, we kind of recovered. Uh, since if you if you look at the charts from from uh, March to to uh, let's say just about two months ago, we surpassed COVID levels. The market S and P Q Q Q S and P is uh, S and P five hundred, the top five hundred companies. It's one of the indexes. Mo almost almost most most stocks surpassed it. All right. Then in, over the last month, we kind of took a, a small dip, but um, overall. And obviously with the election coming up, that's another thing we can, we can uh, get into. The election coming up, a lot of the things are, are starting to drop a little bit. But we have surpassed COVID. A lot of companies, you know, right when COVID, uh, right when COVID happened, took that huge dip. Everyone saw it. The stock market was down. People right. lost money. Right. Everyone was panicking. And then, sure enough, two to three months later, we were we were surpassed. We were surpassing it. And a lot of people made a lot of money. I was gonna say a lot of people get rich off of pandemics because they buy when the stocks are cheap. Right. They, make, they make more money. The other thing I want to know about too is, you know, I hear a word, you know, diversifying your portfolio. First of all, what is portfolio? And then second of all, what does diverse, diversifying mean? Okay, so your, your portfolio is your, your brokerage or your, uh, your account with all your stocks in it or with all your assets in it, I'll say that. Okay. That's your portfolio. So if you got some stocks, you got some bonds, you got some, um, you got some real REITs, which is real estate investment trust, which is like a real estate stock. Um, you got some crypto in there, you know, Bitcoin. What um, the hell is crypto? First of all, like, what is crypto, man? Because I, <laughs> that's been, that's been Bitcoins and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't even know what that is, but I've been hearing that for yeah. the last couple of years, like more and more and more. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a currency. It's an electronic digital currency. I don't trade it. I don't even, I don't invest in Bitcoin. I have before, but it's, it's not my niche at all, but that's what this is a currency. And it's actually, it's actually really, really popular, which is, you know, kind of, kind of crazy, but it's definitely getting a lot of popularity. People are making a lot of money off of it. 
mm-hmm. trading it. But how do you, I mean, how does it work? It's like a digital currency. Is that what it is? Like you pay into something and you get a certain, like a, 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 a certain value to it. Is that what it is? Yeah. So I, I'm not 100% the most knowledgeable person on Bitcoin, but from what I know, um, it is like a, a digital currency. And I know we already have in place ATMs where you can go and get Bitcoin. People are getting, receiving paychecks from their jobs and Bitcoin. Like your, your employer is paying you in Bitcoin. People are paying for things in Bitcoin. I don't, I don't think it's a physical, um, there's no type of physical paper. And I think it's all just electronic on some type form of a card or something. But um, yeah, you, it grows, it has value. Apparently they mine it, which is how they make it. It's really complicated. They make it in the, I guess that formula to make it is so, so difficult that that's why it's valuable. And it's it's crazy, man. It's still still something that I'm learning about more and more, but it's something that's pretty intense. Okay, so the average person, you know, doesn't really have money to invest right away. How do you how would I get started? You know, if I'm just a regular person, you know, I have a regular job, say I'm living here in New York City, which is where this is this podcast is being broadcast from. First of all, it's hard enough to live here. How does the average person even get started? You don't have any extra money to put away. How do how do I start? So that's the that's 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 actually a really a really great great question. Um, what I tell people is that you have to start allocating your money elsewhere. Okay, you have to start allocating your money elsewhere. If I tell people go look go look through your bit through your uh, your bank statements and go look at how many times you ate fast food in the last month. Ooh. All right, and you go look yeah. at it and you're like, damn, I spent four fifty on on food in the last two weeks or I spent 500 on food all right boom how many times did you go shopping did you buy a pair of whatever it is that you bought go look at your bank statement you go back and like damn I spent this much you know you're still living paycheck to paycheck for most people but you spent that much on shoes or, or shirts or something that you probably didn't need you know in the last month so when you go back and look you'd be like okay dang I spent $700 on such and such that I probably could have went without so I, so I say, okay, boom, split that in half, invest that half, and now use that other 300 or 400, um, if our total was 700, on, you know, going out to eat. Now maybe go out to eat twice a week instead of five or six days a week. Right. Maybe go buy such and such once or twice a week or month rather than buying it, you know, however many times a week. So that's how people who who are who are kind of, you know, make barely making ends meet help to allocate their money and you go ahead and put it in in uh in small stocks and gen- and dividend stocks which is what we can get into next actually yeah let's do it so the dividend stocks are the stocks that you purchase that pay you for being a shareholder shareholder is a person that purchases shares in the company so if i'm a shareholder i receive a monthly quarterly or annual um, incentive cash payment from that company so let's say i got a thousand dollars I want to go invest it in AT&T. Uh, I buy my AT&T stock. It's AT&T is about $20, $28 right now. Um, you do the math, boom. Based on $1,000, I'm able to receive X amount of sh- uh, shares. And based on each of those shares, I get a dollar per share annually. Okay, I think AT&T is $2.07. Meaning, meaning you earn that. That's that's the kickback from buying that stock, and the stock is doing well. Mm-hmm. Is that what you mean? Okay. You earn you earn that on your your return is still on your thousand dollars you got in there, but right. because you invested in there, based on how much that share price is annually, they're gonna send you a cash deposit to your bank account or to your brokerage account. I'll say Robinhood and your you know your account um, uh, quarterly. So what people do is they try to get as much equity, meaning they put a lot of money into these dividend stocks because once you get a lot of equity into a dividend stock your quarterly payments or monthly payments can take care of your expenses so wait what do you what do you mean by equity equity just means uh more money in it so okay, if i wanted so more money. equity in, in uh, at and i want more money in it okay yeah so just more equity you want to fund it you want to you want to you know fill it up okay and so um the, be- the best, I-, I think some of the best uh, stocks to invest in are the, the dividend ones, but the- they're called uh, REITs. 
real estate investment trusts. So REITs pay dividends monthly. R-E-I-T, right? R-E-I-T. Okay. They, they pay dividends monthly. So if you got a whole bunch of money in REITs every month on that date that they pay their dividend, every month, you're going to see a deposit to your brokerage account. Mm. You have the choice to withdraw that and put it in your personal bank account, which will probably take two, three days, or you can reinvest it to build that compound interest now. And the compound interest is how basically it stacks on. I got a penny today, two tomorrow, four the next day, eight the next, that's compound interest. Your money is, is building that way. Got it. So how do you decide when you, I mean, obviously, if that's the case, you wanna you want to keep in reinvesting your money. You don't wanna necessarily take it out. You wanna keep it going. Exactly. Right? So how do you know, like, when is a good time to take it out or when do you siphon off a little bit of it? You know what I mean? Like what's, yeah. I guess it's all a personal decision, right? Yeah, so someone just asked me that question yesterday. They yeah. asked me like, well, what do you do if you, well, why would you keep in reinvesting it? You keep reinvesting it to the point that you feel like you can live off of your um, dividends or you have enough freedom with your time. It's all about freedom at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's all about freedom. It's not having to wake up and go work 40 hours, 50 hours every single week, you know, just to live. It's about creating the freedom. And so when you have enough dividend payments that you're getting 2000 a month, 3000 a month. For, imagine if you was getting 3000 a month by not doing anything, not going to a meeting, not clocking in, not getting your car to drive, not doing anything, but 3000 a month was coming to your bank account every month. Like, could someone live off that monthly? Probably, most people probably can, a lot of people probably can't, Yeah. but yeah. they still have their job. Right, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so you grow that dividend income to that's 5,000 a month or 10,000 or however much, you know, so it's annually 100K, annually. And that's the type of investment that I like to do is try to get those dividend, those dividend uh, stocks. And there's other ways to invest also, but I think that's probably the most problem to create that passive income. Hmm. Okay. So let's take a look at the chart you have. You're going to show us the, uh... also, I have a question too. What is, um, what is NASDAQ and S&P? I know S&P is Standard & Poor. Standard & Poor. Right. Um, they're, all, uh, they're all index funds. So NASDAQ is, so we got Dow Jones, S&P, and we got NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the top 100 companies in the world. S&P is the top 500 companies in the world. Um, Excuse me, NASDAQ isn't the top 100, it's the top 100 companies in the world, but it's more so, they can they call that the tech, like a tech heavy uh, index, meaning it's a lot more tech, like Apple, Microsoft, um, compute, like technology, that's okay. what I mean, technology. Um, and then you got the Dow Jones, which is the top 300 companies, or top 50 companies in the world, sorry. I'm tripping. Now Jones is the top 30, not 30. <laughs> Dow is 30, this is how you remember, Dow is 30, S&P is 500, NASDAQ is 100. Okay. There we go, I'm trying to pull up, I was trying to pull up this chart at the same time. You having some trouble multitasking, I see. Yeah, let me see. So I got, I got Apple right here, I drew it up and everything. Let's see. All right, so for those of you who are listening to the podcast, make sure you go to the YouTube page, One Mike Knight, and we have some uh, video here for you to see too. We're pulling up a chart. Here goes Apple chart, okay? We're gonna look at Apple right now. Guys, let's see, hopefully you can see that clearly. All right, so we're looking at Apple, right? Right. All right. So if you look at it from what you asked me earlier, how do you kind of, there's a lot of, for, for one, this all looks like Chinese. If someone wants to look at this who's never seen it before, they're gonna be like, what the hell? It looks like Chinese to most right. people. Looks like Chinese. This is the easy way, this is the, probably the easiest way to try to, to help someone understand this. If this, if this uh, they call this a, a, a chart of price action. So if this thing is going up at an angle, the company's probably doing well. Okay, it's probably doing pretty well. And as you can see, it's going up at an angle, so it's probably doing pretty well. All right, this is Apple. Everyone knows Apple's been a company, a great company for years. Um, so great company, it's going up. A lot of those dips, is usually means that something in the world happened. So these stock, stocks are affected by news 
like no other. Sometimes new, sometimes global events, uh, different things will make the stocks, uh, the stock go up and down. The price of the stock go up and down. Why? Because people are selling, people are buying. Okay? Right. Let's see. And in some of these cases, they're not buying because of those events. You're right. They're not right. buying. Yeah. Yep. They're getting out. They don't want to lose money. They call them, uh, they call them, uh, bag, bag runners. Bag. They got all these terms in like the, the wealth, I call it like the wealth world. They have all these terms. But I don't like to talk like that because people don't understand. Like when you talk in that sense, you don't understand. So I like to make people, I like it to make sense for people. So, so these lines that you see, you see the stock and then you see these lines on here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them real quick. Um, those lines are called indicators. I just got rid of one of them. I'm gonna get rid of this one right here. They're just called indicators. Okay, because I'm a, because I trade, I use those to find the right time to buy. And then I use those to find the right time to sell. Those indicators give me uh, kind of like a like a hint hint to to get in the trade or get out of the trade. Gotcha. If that makes sense. So, but trading is a is a is a whole another no whole another uh, whole another beast. So, if someone wants to invest in Apple, and they see the company is 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 going up over a long period of time, if you had access, if you go up, go on here and watch these charts, look at these charts, you want to invest when Apple is is low. So, here. Here, that's when you want to invest when the company is low. Because why? It's cheaper. It's cheaper. Okay. It's and because cheaper. and because it's a strong company like Apple, you know you're almost not really guaranteed, but you know it's going back up. Exactly, and right. almost guaranteed. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you go look at this chart. You go. Like, you say you look at this chart. You like, okay, this thing, this thing is pretty low right here. Let me let me invest a little bit of money into this. You know, and then let's say if you did do that. Like I said, everyone in the world has an iPhone. They're not going out of business anytime soon. Let's say if you did invest right here, which is March 31st, and you decided to go look back at your account here in uh, just July, because what, in a few months, you know, four or five months or so, you got this much growth, right? Right. All right. So it went from 60 to about, well, they had a, a, a Apple had a, a, a split. Uh, a couple months ago, so this is gonna the price is gonna be a little is is off, but it's the same same value. But just look at the growth that you would have gotten in just five months on your money, right? Yeah. Right. And so that's just kind of like a basic. You want you kind of want to. They say you want to buy low and sell high, and that's that, that's true to an extent. To an extent, and if you even go back here and you look back in 2019. Look where Apple was at here. Boom. You buy here. You might want to buy here. You know what I'm saying? It's like I said, it's, it looks like Chinese, but if someone, if when you take the time to actually, you know, look at this stock or look at look at the stock market for just 30 minutes a day, you will see how this makes 100 percent sense. Right. And plus, with companies like Apple, we know that Apple throughout the year has certain events happening. We know that they're you know going to drop an iPhone. They're going to drop a, a you know a new um, iPad sometimes, so the stock is continually, you know, moving, hopefully moving up. 100%. Yeah, that's so, a good point. That, yeah. That's a good point. Okay. Because real quick, every time Apple drives, uh, drops an iPhone, you look at the, you look at this, you look at their uh, chart. Boom. Yeah. Which is, they dropped one, I think just this past week or two weeks ago, they dropping it right now. And they're in a downtrend right now. Um, but they look like to me, in my opinion, they're about to make a move here pretty soon to, to go back up. And, right. Uh, yeah, I think they had a big conference about it. They were telling about it. So I think the stock went up a little bit and then now it's sort of evening out. And then when they actually drop it, when it actually comes out, people are going to start buying it. So you hope that yeah. it'll go up again. 100, 100%. Yeah. Got it. 100%. Got it. Yeah, man. What is, um, what is cash flow? cash flow so that can be uh 
related to stocks or it can be just related to your your regular life. Cash flow is just you have multiple streams of cash coming in. If you have cash flow, you have different avenues of making cash, of making income, making money. That's your cash flow from uh, businesses, from products, from services. Um, that, that's that's cash flow that you can allocate to other other assets. So if I want to go out tomorrow and say, like we said before, I have, you know, maybe the average person has two hundred dollars to start. Where would I begin? What do I look at? What what would be good? You know, and I'm not asking you for your professional advice. I'm just saying, where would I where would I start with it? What what's the first thing I should do? Uh, the first thing you should do if you're the average person who who wants to get into investing and you don't know a lick, I would definitely say. Uh, Go on social media and follow an influencer or follow or watch a YouTube video. But if you want to get in the market, your best bet is is uh, investing in an ETF or index fund. Meaning an index fund and an ETF is a basket of stocks. So I have this basket right here. There's Apple, there's there's uh, there's Walmart, there's Costco, there's Target, there's right. There's a hundred of them in here. All right, if you invest in this fund, you invest in all of these, right? If I just invest in Walmart individually, I invest in Walmart by itself. Now I have to kind of do some due diligence. I need to watch with when they're going up, when they're going down. Am I making money? Am I losing money? Do I want to get in? Do I want to get out? So the basket of stocks is more for the, the passive investor. The person who doesn't know too much and they probably don't want to get you know make that life change to start learning too much this is passive because all these companies are being managed by someone okay and they re they rebalance this basket every year so let's say this company over here is doing bad they're going to kick that company out you're not messing up the fund no if this company is over here on the outside that's not in it's doing good hey come join us you're now in the fund so they rebalance it every year. So that's why it's more safe. It's safe to, it's more of the safer route when you want to invest in, uh, when you're a beginner investor, excuse me, when you're a beginner investor, it's more the safer route to invest in a basket of stocks, which is the ETF or a uh, index fund. So like the S&P 500. Okay. Yeah. It. All right, man, that's, that's big. That's, that's good news. That's good news. <laughs> Yeah, man. So listen, man, I thank you for your time. That's a good way to get started. I think, you know, a lot of people are going to learn a lot from this and a lot of people will definitely, definitely start some investments. I know I have uh, some private investments that I've done myself and um, this gives me a good, another good starting block to do some more. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate that. So tell us a little bit about what, what you have going. I know you have a... You're a brand, man. You got you got some stuff going on too. The King Essentials, right? Yeah, man. I just, um, you know, kind of when COVID happened, I just, it just, it kind of like changed my whole life when COVID happened, man. Right. I was, I was doing so much. I got, I was done playing ball about a year and a half ago. Um, I was trying to get into life, figure out what it is I wanted to do. I do personal training. I do some coaching on the side. I'm, I'm a strength coach, but then you know, COVID happened and everything kind of shut down, and I'm running around with my head cut off, like. What am I? What am I to do? So, like most people, yeah, like most people, yeah, yeah, man. So I jump. I just I started jumping into investing. I started jumping into trading, and I started to learn how to create a business, how to create a brand. And um, I, I, you know, I kind of just got together, came up with some ideas, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna make some male grooming products. Um, guys for beards, out of ways, you know, right, uh, right. trimmers, just just for for men, for kings, kings. This is called King Essentials. Is my my uh male grooming product business it's called King Essentials and it's uh just male grooming product that's all it is and um I've been scaling it um I'm still waiting for some products you know um got it trademarked I'm building the social media for it now I'm trying to just you know get it out there but that's what I'm on now so I'm I'm, wait, I'm, I'm working on that real hard week to week you know I'm trying to scale that thing while also giving this wealthy advice on on IG trying to scale that as well and I appreciate that too. And that's why I reached out to you because I, I went to your IG page and the way you were explaining it was so simple 
but had so much information. So I wanted you to come on and, you know, help everybody else with that. And please, everybody, make sure you go to the, give them your IG page and your information and let everybody know where they can find you. My, my IG is rock solid, R-A-K-S-O-L-I-D. And uh, my King Essential brand is King Essentials with a Z at the end. So it's E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-Z instead of S, King Essentials with a Z at the end. I like that. If you need a brand ambassador, let me know. Whip this beard into shape. <laughs> I see you got it, bro. I'm gonna have to see. Right. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna for sure send send you out some stuff for sure. You know 100%. Hair might be coming off soon. I posted a picture with the hair off. That's that's just getting everybody ready because the hair is coming off soon. Yeah. Just get to that point in your life, and that's what it is. I hear you on here, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, I appreciate your time. Please make sure you follow Rock Solid on IG and all other social medias. Get your King Essentials. He's getting that together. Make sure you follow that and uh, purchase that. You can follow us at One Mike Night. One Mike Night is spelled O-N-E-M-I-C-N-I-T-E, creating an artist community, giving out information and bringing together a community of people of color and otherwise. You can also follow me at Marcos Luis, M-A-R-C-O-S-L-U-I-S dot com. you find all the social media there. I want to thank you for joining me on this episode of One Mike Night Podcast. See you next time. Boom.